Hi everyone, welcome back to Reading Wednesdays. Today I'm going to read chapters 9 and 10 from Dragons vs. Unicorns. When we left off uh, last week, what we heard is that Mrs. Hansberry had just grabbed everybody's attention and she was about to announce the roles for the play Dragons vs. Unicorns. So let's dive right into it. Chapter 9, Stuck on You. Polymers, noun. Big molecules made from a bunch of smaller molecules. They're like a soccer team that sticks together. Thank you, boys and girls, said Mrs. Hansberry. I was so impressed with your auditions. You should all you all showed quite a bit of enthusiasm. And frankly, this decision was not an easy one. In truth, any one of you could have played any of the innumerable roles, large or small. Her eyes swept the auditorium, and for a moment they landed on mine. No, no, please, I don't want a part or innumerable roles. Sheesh. Mrs. Hansberry loved to use big words. She said, if you don't know what something means, then go look it up. Suddenly, someone was shaking me. It was Bertie. Did you hear? I got the part. I'm the lead unicorn. I hugged her and gave her a high five and a big loud, yay! Then Bertie was shushing me. Some other people wanted that part too, she said, lowering her voice. We don't want them to feel bad, since we all have to work together as a cast and crew. Right, kind of like a polymer, a giant molecule made up of a bunch of smaller ones. Of course, there was nothing wrong with showing happiness for my BFF. My dad, the therapist, said if you deny your emotions, it meant you could get messed up. Own it, I said. Mrs. Hansberry announced a bunch of other parts as well as all of the tech positions. When she explained that Elijah would do the lights, he hooted, and Jeremy slapped him hard on the back and whispered something to him. And Kate's going to be our assistant director. Yes, I whooped. In front of me, Avery sniffed as if I was being too rambunctious, but I didn't care. Anyway, Mrs. Hansberry didn't seem to mind. She motioned me forward. Kate, can you stand up? I bounced out of my seat and gave a quick wave. Kate will be assisting me and generally helping to keep rehearsal running smoothly, said Mrs. Hansberry. She will be my second pair of eyes, so that's it, children. However, I'm going to need some volunteers to help pass out the scripts. Mrs. Hansberry handed me a small stack of scripts. We're going to have great fun working together, she said with a wide smile. Definitely. Do you have a list of my duties, I asked. You're just going to have to follow my lead and we'll make it up as we go along. I've never used a student assistant director before, so this is a first, she winked. I think you'll do a terrific job. As I passed out the scripts, my stomach twisted. The actors had scripts and lines to follow. They had a set of directions as clear as steps to an experiment posted by Dr. Caroline. What did I get? I was supposed to make things up as I went along. What if I didn't know what to do? What if I, what if my making it up was all wrong? As I handed a script to some of the kids who were cast as dragons, Elijah put out his hand. Hello, I need a script too. What do you mean? I asked. Not just unicorns and dragons get scripts. I need to follow the script for the lighting cues. Of course. I handed Elijah a script. I knew that. Yeah, right. Elijah squinted at me. And unicorns are real, along with singing dragons. They live in the land of happy rainbows. Ha ha, I admitted. Then I whispered. Okay, I seriously didn't know about the lighting cues. I know, said Elijah. I'm making this up as I go. We can tell, said Jeremy, who had one of the lead dragon roles, along with Julia and Rory Workman. Just don't make up lines, I warned. I'll be checking the script. Now I'm scared, said Jeremy, in a mock quivering voice. Good, I said, then I marched away, wondering, could I do this? Could I make this up as I went along? I really didn't know. During a break, after doing a read-through, I hurried to Bertie to see how she was doing. I didn't think Avery is very happy, she said, pointing over to where she was frowning at her script. She's only got three lines. Bet she was hoping to be lead dragon, even though she's great at dance as dance captain. They say she's the best in her jazz class at Dance Academy. Avery was always saying how her dance class helped her soccer skills. She was definitely sure-footed on the field. She's so perfect as one of the dancing dragons, I said. Those were the dragons without big speaking parts. They sang a couple of songs and had two dance numbers. After the morning break, we sat around in a circle on the stage and talked about how the read-through went. I noticed that Bertie's voice wasn't loud enough, but I figured it was too early to say something. It's not like there was an audience yet. Jeremy said that we should work hard at keeping it realistic. What do you mean by that, I asked. The dragons need to be intimidating, he said. If we do it just for laughs, it won't be as much fun. We've got to scare the first graders a little bit. He snarled and roared, and a few kids screamed. Like that, said Jeremy. He has a point, said Mrs. Hansberry. That can be something for us to work on. That gives me an idea. We could have the dragons breathe real fire. Did you say a real live fire, my dear? Asked Mrs. Hansberry. Yeah, like Jeremy says, it will make it more realistic and scare people a lot. 
Miss Sansbury swept her arms dramatically over her face. I'm afraid it will be too much of a real scare for the audience and for your director. My mind sifted through all the videos and shows I've watched on Dr. Caroline's YouTube channel where she made stuff explode. Hey, what about lycopodium powder? Oh, well, that sounds vaguely familiar, said Miss Sansbury. Please tell me more. It's what circus performers use to blow fire. It looks like the dust on my dad's workbench, and it's supposed to work really well. Aha! I'm not so sure I know enough about it. The circus performer part sounds a bit intimidating, so for now, I'm going to give you a conditional no, but I promise to look it up when I get home. We need a very safe yet exciting solution. What if we use smoke instead of fire? We could project a video of smoke onto a screen. Hmm. Mrs. Hansberry squinted her eyes. Now that's a creative solution. What if our dragons exhale blizzards instead of fire? Is that scary enough? Asked Elijah almost to himself. Avery shot up her hand. My parents use special effects all the time at the theater. At Brookside, we have a thea theatrical fog machine. That's an excellent idea, said Mrs. Hansberry. What do you think, Kate? You know how in winter your breath looks like smoke because it's cold? I think it should look like that, but I don't think this will look enough like that. I admitted feeling bad about vetoing Avery's idea, but also wanting to tell the truth and make the show look the best it could be. You don't know how special effects will look. Avery turned around and rolled her eyes. We may have some other options, I said. Let me think on this. Good luck with that, said Avery. I didn't need luck. I just needed my brain and Dr. Caroline's list of experiments. Tomorrow we would go over blocking. Those were the directions for where everyone needed to be on stage and when they moved. Honestly, before this afternoon, I had never even heard of the word. Mrs. Hansberry told me that it would be my job to take notes in the director's script. I've marked it up pretty well, but I always like to make some on-the-moment adjustments, she told me. Got it. I know you will, she said. After we had a lunch break and completed some group bonding exercises, we had to do a tongue twister together, I went to pick up my, mom, my mom's leather backpack. Immediately, I noticed that my zipper was open. That's funny, I said to Bertie. I remember zipping it. Curiously, I peered inside my bag. Globs of something waxy and blobby dotted the inside. What's that? I screeched. Chapter 10, a science spell. Liquid, a noun. The molecules are waving their arms and sidestepping because they have more space than they do when they're a solid, like the difference between chocolate milk and brownies. Sort of. It was my fault. I hadn't tightened the cap on the bottle of the glue in Mom's bag. I had checked and it had been loose. Now I had to deal with a sticky mess. If in the family room, after play rehearsal, Liam and I watched Dr. Caroline. Normally I love Dr. Caroline. Normally I binge watch it. But today my mind was completely stuck on the globs of glue wedged inside Mom's bag. To make things worse, Mom clanked around the kitchen scrubbing the sink, which meant she was stretched, stressed, <laughs> which meant I had to wait until she, had, she was gone before digging under the sink to find something to clean her bag. Look, Dr. Caroline is doing something dangerous, cried Liam, waving at a tub of boiling liquid nitrogen on the computer screen. That was one of my favorite experiments. Basically, Dr. Caroline dunked balloon animals into chilly liquid nitrogen. Actually, super freezing, as in four times colder than the North Pole in the middle of the blizzard. Will she get hurt? asked Liam, a little too enthusiastically. Don't worry, she's got extra special gloves. Plus, she's wearing goggles and lab coat. In the kitchen, Mom rinsed out all the soap in the sink. Hopefully, she would scoot into her office really soon. Hey, Dr. Caroline's doing a spell, said Liam, fixing his eyes on the computer screen. The balloon animals shriveled, shriveled like raisins when they hit the sizzling liquid nitrogen. When Dr. Caroline scooped them out of the tub, they blew back up again. It looks like magic, but it's science. Charles Law, to be specific. As the temperature dropped, the volume went down, causing the balloons to shrink. As the temperature rose, the volume increased, causing the balloons to pump back up again. Mom stopped running the water. Kids, she called out, glancing down at her phone. Good news, I just found out that the school's a finalist for that community grant I applied for. Yay, cried out Liam. I knew it, I said. Humming happily, Mom polished the sink with a soft, dry cloth. They're going to interview me tomorrow. I want to bring in those scrapbooks showing off the school garden. The grant committee can visualize our farm-to-table lunch program. Are schools turning into a farm? Asked Liam, bouncing off the couch. Well, sort of. Mom folded up the cloth. Kids harvest veggies in the fall. Excuse me, in the fall, the plan is to eat lunch from the garden once a week. That is, if we win the grant. I want to be a harvest kid, exclaimed Liam. You can. Mom hung her gloves under the sink. Kate, you know that leather backpack you borrowed? I'd like, I'd like it back for the meeting tomorrow. It'd be perfect to load up with the scrapbooks. 
Sure, I said, hoping my warm face wasn't giving away my inner panic. What should I do? Tell her the truth? Her happiness would shrivel up faster than the liquid nitrogen balloon. Plus, she would think I was irresponsible. Um, it's in my room. Uh, the bag, I mean, I'll get, get it for you in a sec. My throat swelled with worry. Normally, my mom thought I was pretty responsible, which is why she let me do lots of stuff on my own. But after last week's glass bowl explosion in the kitchen, and now the glue in the backpack, I wasn't so sure. Maybe she would tell Mrs. Hansberry I shouldn't be the assistant director. Then I couldn't be with Bertie or Elijah. I'm sorry to snatch that bag back, Mom strolled over the couch. I feel terrible. Oh, don't. Seriously. I rubbed my chin. But maybe you could use a more official looking bag, like a briefcase. Hmm, I thought about that, but it looked too corporate, like the school doesn't need the money. A nice backpack is perfect. Actually, her backpack was the opposite of perfect right now. Thanks, honey. Mom kissed my forehead and then Liam's cheek. You guys are the best. Just sitting there watching a science show, she clasped her hands, beaming down at us. How did I ever get so lucky? I opened my mouth to tell her that she didn't get that lucky, but my lips stuck together as if they'd been glued. As soon as mom left, I barreled into the kitchen. Hey, said Liam, can we do that Dr. Caroline experiment together? It's called an experiment, and no, it's too dangerous without a grown-up around and the proper gear. But I have another experiment, and it's called cleaning. Want to try? No way! And that's exactly what I thought and was counting on. And that is chapters 9 and 10 from Dragons vs. Unicorns. Um, after last week of sharing some information about my best friend Birdie, who the character Birdie is based off of, I got some requests for what Birdie has ever made for me. Um, so I wanted to point out these earrings that I'm wearing. These are classic Birdie earrings. I will tag her, so if you're interested in following her and supporting her jewelry, this is what she makes. She makes amazing jewelry. It's fantastic. But she's also an, an artist, and so this is something she drew for me a couple years ago. We were in college at the time and it is based off a picture uh, that's me and that's her and if you could see what the actual picture looked like it looked exactly like us see can you tell <laughs> all right go hug your BFF <laughs>